I would do anything for love. But, but I, I won't, won't do that. that. Cheat. That was the thing he wouldn't do. If you were really? Wondering. Yeah, it was cheat. Yeah. He would do it. Like, I know meatloaf. It's like, oh, meatloaf. Fuck, man. Meatloaf. Hey guys, welcome back to the Roman and Rhodes YouTube channel. I'm Roman. And I'm Rhodes. What's on your mind today? Wine and bricks and bricks of wine. What does bricks and wine have anything to do with one another? They have everything to do with each other. They saved one another back in the day. Prohibition, remember it? Oh yeah, I remember, of course. Just, about like, it. Like, just like, like it was yesterday. No boots. You can't have it. You can't have it. Now check this out. All right, I did not know. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of apparently plants that bear fruit are like this. Mm -hmm. But, all right, so Prohibition came along. Right. And they're like, no more booze, no more making of booze. We're making booze-related products. It's the devil's liquor. The devil's, no. Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> Moving on, though. I was about to say, So yeah. these uh, vineyards, as they're called, people who grow vines, specifically the Great Barren variety, had a decision to make. They could either rip up their vineyards, their vineyards. Oh, shit. That's where they yeah. get it from, dude. Wow. You didn't know that? No. Vineyard the, comes from vineyard. Jeez. Lazy. Oh, well. I digress. So they were like, we could rip them up, start planting new stuff, or we could leave them in and try to power through it somehow and sell our grapes in a different way. Grapes of Wrath was inspired by this. But I mean, basically, I mean, but. You could sell grapes as just grapes, as produce. You could do for Damn. grape juice, right? You know, the thing is... Or is it like specific types the, of grapes? Try a grape wine and a regular juice. It's not enjoyable. Okay. Because they're specifically designed to be fermented. Of course. So they have really intense flavors that you're not going to find palatable or tasty on your mouth. They'll if you buy, yeah, yeah, bitter. You're very bitter. Now, if you're an experienced viney whiny person... You probably take a bite of that bitter, you know, grape and be like, mm, "This will taste good later." But today, it's gonna be horrible. So, this is what they did. Um, some people did close up shop. They ripped up all their vines. And oh, here's the thing: if they decided, you know, they everybody kind of thought prohibition was gonna end eventually, but it takes about seven years for vine grapes, wine grapes, to start producing grapes again. Mm -hmm. And also, they could have lost all of their. Um, the, the, I guess there's little bits of, I don't know what, true je ne sais quoi, in these freaking plants that give them unique flavors, then they would Those have to like be start experimenting with the tangs and all the other different combinations of it. It would change. Okay. And they would like lose like out on seasons of it. It would be yeah. like, you know, horrible. So what they decided to do, uh, several vineyards got their wine, their grapes, right? And I guess they dehydrated them, crushed them up or crushed them and dehydrated them. And it is very hard to find what exactly what they did you can kind of have to assume i mean keep in mind this was a they already knew they, they, keep, 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 there's a reason why there's a reason why there's not a lot of information on this they crushed it up keep it on the down low made what what we call like basically a concentrate they made a concentrate truly dehydrated in the form of a brick okay right and then it had instructions on it now there was a law that said not only could you not uh, make alcohol producing stuff you cannot give people alcohol producing stuff and knowingly know that they would knowingly ingest it to become intoxicated in fact oh, okay. in fact you had to have a warning label if it could get them intoxicated to tell them not Ooh. to intoxicate themselves so the wine people did this they said absolutely absolutely do not take this brick of wine add it to about a gallon of water <laughs> yes. absolutely don't do that do not then store in a cool dry place for up to 30 days or 20 one to 31 days depending on variety and even instructed you why you shouldn't do this and what flavors would then result including pineal grigio you know all the i don't know the names of other fancy ones but like the flavors you would get Cabernet. for doing the things you wouldn't exactly yeah cabernets and a whole variety of them that you shouldn't do because you Merlot. know exactly but and i think too they even had a few places where they could mix it for you because legally you could make your own booze it's just is difficult and kind of time consuming to do. Mm -hmm. So once you made it yourself, it was you're a little bit in the free. I think we might be a little confused on the law, but I thought found that interesting thing out that you guys might like to know about it. You find it interesting? that was very interesting. Yeah, right. I wonder if we could do that if people still do that as a form to. Well, I know it's not necessary yeah, to, to make a wine, but I mean, if, you're basically talking about just getting like some of that frozen concentrate, you know, adding, you know, and then 
I think the thing though is they, they already had the sugar in it, I think. Because oh. you only had to add the water, I think. I could be wrong and I don't care. So, I was wondering though, yeah. what do Catholics do for like mass? Are we allowed wine? Like during Prohibition, do you know? I don't stuff? know about Prohibition, but I knew uh, in Catholic theology, we believe that both uh, species of communion, both the wine and the bread, the host, uh, contain, after the transubstantiation, they contain the body, blood, soul, divinity of Christ. So you only have to take one of the species. So you don't have to take both. Re- and, oh, okay, so I'm assuming probably that then. Yeah, so you could probably just, they probably maybe just uh, pretty good. Pretty, had pretty the host strong communion. I would try a pound. Oh, wait. I just thought a way we could try this. You know how they have like the frozen bricks of spinach? Yes. Can we wind that? It would need to be fermented though. Uh, would that? Can we do that? Can we do? We can do a whole series on will it wine. I, I'm down for that. Oh. I just you, found a recipe for a dandelion wine actually. Oh, yeah. I've heard about that. I heard it's supposed to be super good. And too, you sweet. can eat the dandelion greens as a salad. I actually, yeah. When I did here, it was an Italian recipe. It's super high in iron, higher than broccoli. Which I didn't have if you don't, if you don't put pesticides wash in your yard, them, yeah, yeah, they're perfectly fine to eat. Do wash them, of course. Yeah, and you have to wash them, them and cook them. But don't don't eat them if you don't even wash them if you have put pesticides yeah, yeah, in your yeah. yard because do it. I've been meaning to try them for a while now. I've just been super lazy about cooking because mm-hmm. I was like they're all over my yard. They look super rich and dark green. Well, we'll but, do. A, I'm pretty sure we have a whole bunch out here. Actually, I think about. I mean, sp- I'm, most things should be able to turn into wine. Let's find out. I mean, and think about it too. That how easy is that? It's literally made by laziness. Just put these things in a bucket, ferment it, boom, go. Did you how they started kimchi? Really? It was, yeah, isn't that like that's like they were like, oh man, I heard about this recipe, you know, for like sauerkraut. Let's try it out. Oh no, I think we ruined it. Is it bad? I had add hot sauce to it. You'd be good. <laughs> like and share the videos, please. <laughs>